Good morning, everybody. It's about 8.20 in the morning on Saturday, May 20th, 2023. And I opened up the, <laughs> the fence to the ducks, hoping that they'd get out and mingle with the cows. And when I come to the field, the cows are inside the pond there, just kind of looking at the ducks. But we didn't lose any ducks last night or yesterday. So it looks like it's going okay. I'm going to mess with the fence a little more there. It's kind of set as a trap. So the ducks that are trying to get out will get trapped. But the goal is to get these ducks. Um, they're following me because they're hungry. i got to get them some more food. The goal is to get these ducks uh, eating the flies and the insects. And uh, hopefully they can protect themselves from the predators on the land. At least the ones that can get through the fence. You know. Um, they actually, the Muscovy ducks actually prefer the woods. They do like water though. They just, they're not very good at water. Anyway, these guys are hungry. I'm going to go towards the cows. Um, so when I moved them yesterday morning, I gave them only a single cell. I should have given them two because I wouldn't be there. Wasn't going to be there last night. Um, I'm kind of walking where the wire was. On the right side is where they were. And the left side is where I moved them to. I gave them a double cell for this morning. Uh, let's take a look at a patty here. That's a beautiful patty. There are flies all over it, but it's a good patty nonetheless. It's firm. It's not too tall, not too short. So it looks good. The grass here is fantastically, amazingly wonderful. Um, a commentator said that I need to hay and fertilize. Um, I disagree. If, if you're not going to rotationally graze, if you're just going to leave your cows out in the pasture and you're not going to move them, uh, then yeah, your, your grass is going to die. You need to, um, resurrect your grass every year. Otherwise you won't get much. This grass is not peak missing a lot of nitrogen it could have a lot more nitrogen it's going to take time for that to build up in the soil and uh, there's a breeze wind blowing from the north it's 66 degrees it's quite chilly I put my lapel mic on because of it look at all those flies look at all those flies oh well I'm not going to get rid of flies by swatting them. Ooh, an anthill. Anyway, I'm going to keep doing this experiment where I move them once or twice a day and seeing how things progress. So far, I'm pretty pleased with the results. Um, the strategy is to give the ground time to rest, the grass especially, time to rest after being grazed and let nature do her thing. Um, trusting that nature knows what she's doing. And uh, uh, in Greg Judy's case, even he has to do some kind of maintenance. He shreds fields when the weeds grow too tall. This is my neighbor's. Uh, he doesn't let cows back in this pasture here. This is his little nature preserve. He mows it once or twice a year. Um, but this is my side of the fence. You can kind of tell there's like different stuff growing on each side so the cows do have an effect on the land so anyway um, the idea of the rotational grazing is that you give your grass time a chance to rest you let it recover naturally you allow the biological processes that are supposed to occur in the soil to occur without hindrance uh, and thus eliminate your reliance on inputs for those of you who don't really understand why that's important um, I read an article where uh, John Kerry at the World Economic Forum said that they're gonna take away the land from the farmers um, seize it by force if necessary and the idea is that they're trying to stop global warming or something or other like that <clears throat> 
in the end, um, it's going to come down to what you're able to do for yourself. If you're relying on your nation or your industry uh, to support you, uh, they're not going to be there to support you. They're going to be there to subvert you. And allowing them any influence on your operation is going to be detrimental to your operation. They um, are, it's pretty obvious now if you're not paying attention, even if you're not paying attention, it's pretty obvious what's really going on in the world and how far we've fallen from where we used to be. But um, my, my philosophy is that make your own food, uh, get away from the cities, um, secure your property. There's a guy on YouTube called Wrangler Straw, Wrangler Star. He puts out little videos where he talks about how uh, vehicles have tires and tires are necessary to move them. And, you know, there are certain devices that if you happen to carelessly leave them lying around, will puncture said tires and to act accordingly. Um, that's kind of where we're at right now is we're in a low scale um, conflict right now where there's a certain philosophy that is pervasive in this world targeted with destroying a certain segment of the population uh, not because they're bad people but because they are non-compliant so certain groups of people are not compliant with their desires and so they're trying to force compliance unethically so, since I'm one of those people that don't comply, I would rather serve God than serve man. I realize that it's time to remember why Abraham fled Ur. <laughs> uh, remember why Abraham embraced a rural pastoral lifestyle rather than go to the cities. And uh, why he specifically chose to... Uh, become self-reliant and independent rather than dependent and subject to people who don't like him. So anyway, that's kind of the story here. Uh, the Amish were right about a lot of things. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a beautiful day. It is cold. I I'm going to say it's cold. It's 66. I don't have to wear a jacket, but I feel a little bit cold. And given the warm weather recently, this is kind of out of place, so... Yeah. For any of those wondering, um, if you're concerned about carbon dioxide and global warming, I, I, I must remind you that the entire thing has been exposed as a giant fraud and scam. Let's see how many minutes am I in this video now? About eight minutes. It's probably safe to talk about this stuff now because uh, YouTube can't watch the entire video. Uh, the entire thing has been exposed, exposed as a fraud and a scam. The temperatures aren't rising. Average temperature means nothing. There is no physical significance of average temperature. Uh, the temperature of the Earth can be discovered and measured. Um, carbon dioxide is a gas that behaves pretty much like every other gas out there. Its thermodynamic properties are well documented. And there is no such thing as the greenhouse effect. There's a paper written. Uh, it's called The Falsification of Carbon Dioxide as a Greenhouse Gas. Where he goes over what the greenhouse gas is supposed to be. Or rather, you know, 10 different theories of what the greenhouse effect is supposed to be. And how carbon dioxide doesn't do any of those things. And that's not how thermodynamics work. The um, people behind the global warming conspiracy and fraud were caught red-handed sending emails to each other one of them used the phrase hide the decline where because some of the records were showing that the temperature was declining not rising as carbon dioxide increases um, they had to uh, stop using that data set beyond a certain date and start using another data set that doesn't correspond well at all with actual temperatures and so it's called the uh, Mike's Nature Trick. They called it Mike's Nature Trick to uh, fraudulently 
show the results they wanted rather than what the science actually says. So, um, global warming is a massive conspiracy involving multiple actors across different sectors of the um, society, most especially the politicians. And if you go against them and expose them for the fraud they are, they will target you and try to destroy you. Um, you're not allowed to speak the truth on the internet, you'll get censored. Um, you're not allowed to talk about actual data, you'll get censored. You're not allowed to uh, talk about the science of how carbon dioxide and other gases behave, you'll get censored. And you'll get punished, you'll get isolated, mocked, and destroyed. So, global warming is a scam, right? It's a fraud. Anybody who supports it is dishonest. And people who blindly follow along should not be trusted with any power. So if you know somebody who thinks global warming is real, you can safely disregard all of their opinions. In fact, do the opposite of what they suggest. <laughs> You'll be happier for it. So, the truth is, we're at... Um, geologically low levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The plants are dying because there's not enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And if carbon dioxide gets any lower, um, life on Earth might cease because everything depends on plants growing. And the carbon dioxide cycle is part of the oxygen cycle. The reason why we have so much oxygen in the atmosphere is because of carbon dioxide and the plants that create it. And the other organisms that do it so this is the big scam that a chemical that's necessary for life is somehow a pollutant and that we need to lower the levels of this chemical despite the fact that we are almost on the brink of total extinction because it is too low if carbon dioxide were 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 100 times as high, our planet would be way, way greener than it is now, almost like a Garden of Eden. Um, because the plants are struggling just to produce sugar because of how limited carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. So anyway, you can take that to the bank. Have a great day, everybody, and bye-bye.